Okay, found this incredible spot. We're actually in Idaho, just right over the Wyoming border. And I took this little dirt road to this camping site in the state. Actually, I think it's a national forest. But anyway, incredible spot, nice and quiet. There's a stream down below. And I'm going to paint these backlit aspens. Just love that lighting on them. So uh, let's get started. Okay, let's get started. It's so basically what I'm after with this. I'm going to be painting the small again. Is I really want to get just the overall uh, contrast between those beautiful yellows that I'm seeing up there and the uh, darks. Well, I'm not going to fuss too much about composition. I do want to set it up so that the variety of um, lights and darks that I'm seeing in there really shows through. This is just a rough sketch, but I'm going to use this to capture as much information as possible so that I can work something up in the studio later. My darkest darks are the evergreen trees that I'm seeing back there, but they're not full strength dark. They're a little ways away from me. We're dealing with quite a bit of light between light and air that's coming between me and these trees. Normally I like to start with more of a foreground dark because that's usually going to be your strongest value, your strongest dark value, but um, not having a whole lot of foreground in this one. This is a very uh, tall composition. Back home in the studio I would probably be using an even longer, more ver vertical uh, format than what I have here. basically squinting at the scene, trying to simplify it as much as possible. Keeping the paint very thin. See my bag is blowing everywhere. Put a rock in that. This is a stage where you kind of average everything out. My foreground colors, there's a lot of greens in there. So probably going to be some of the easiest colors to determine. So I'm just going to lightly indicate those. Remember the rules of aerial perspective. Things recede. As things recede, they uh, get cooler. Generally, there are caveats to that, of course. So, if I just get some notes of color in there. That's going to help me. One of the tricks that I have when I'm painting a scene like this, when taking a big scene and making it small, is the um, fact that you know I can see a lot more than what I'm putting on canvas. And sometimes I end up looking at spots that are not going to fit on the canvas. 
that can sometimes throw me off. Especially when you're out west. It's a lot of stuff here. You're painting a really big area. So condensing that big area down to something small, it can be tricky. At least for me it is. It's basically building from dark to light. Funny when I started painting, there's hardly anyone back here, and now your car's coming back like crazy. I guess they're coming and going. Okay, now I'm going to go in and just ever so lightly suggest those more distant um, tree covered hills. We had a little bit of cloud cover earlier this morning on my first uh, or my second painting but that seems to have gone by the wayside thank goodness not sure if you can hear that buzzing those are some really noisy grasshoppers Okay, so basically I have the white of the canvas covered, which is good. I'm gonna go in now and strengthen some of these darks that are closer and a little warmer. They're very important for gauging the rest of the values in this uh, composition. Get slightly lighter as I go up here there's actually some hints of very warm green showing through we'll get that in later I just want that feeling of atmosphere that really happens between here and here between this more bluish and bluish distant trees and these trees are somewhat closer Even though there's not a cloud in the sky, I don't have to worry about the misery of having uh, the sun constantly peek in and out. I'm still trying to work fast because that sun 
It's always moving. In here, I get a little more atmosphere going on. So I'm going to uh, add just a touch of white and a little bit more blue and magenta, I'm sorry, alizarin into my uh, mixture. Those are the things that are so important for when you're plein air painting. It's basically for me the process is block in your major shapes, your approximate lights and darks, and then go in and start to look for those little, the subtle transitions of color and value within those value shapes that you just put in. Paint the light, paint the air, paint those value masses, and worry about the detail last. Okay, now down here, more toward the ground. There's some very subtle greens I want to get in. Okay, now for the star of the show. Those orange yellows. Now they're strong, but they're not as strong as you would think. So I want to be careful I don't get too crazy with them. Actually, before I get to them, I want to build out a little bit more. Feel that color is pretty good. I'm going to swatch that at the bottom. bring this color pretty much right to the edge of the shape.
I find it easier to build up to these strong colors by putting in the more muted ones. Kind of helps keep me from getting too crazy and too powerful with those colors. And always make sure you're squinting at the scene. Even though these are dark, there's pretty much nowhere in these aspens that gets darker than this, than those background trees. So I wanna make sure that I respect that. Whoops, dropped my paper towels. The perils of plein air painting. These spots get even warmer and darker as they come down. And they actually start to cool off because of all the trunks and sticks and all that business down there. They don't get crazy cold. But they can cool and a little darker. And their edges just kind of get lost in spots and get found again. I'm gonna swatch that color. It's a pretty good one. Which reminds me, I should swatch this dark also. Kind of this warm greenish dark in here. It kind of blends out into the light. Some strong little reds in there. Just want to give us a slight hint of them.
Okay, now I'm going to go back to these highlight areas. Just realized I should have put sunscreen on. to be careful mixing into those darks. Watch that color there. I'm going in thicker now since I'm pretty confident about my colors and values. You don't want to do this until you for sure know what's going on and that you have your um, colors and values pretty well established. Just uh, working on a painting. Oh, you're doing all working with oils? Yep. Okay. Yeah, my wife's a watercolorist. Okay. I pity you. No, just kidding. 
That's a tough medium. <laughs> I used to do watercolor, but yeah. I've never tried oil. I've done acrylic and watercolor, and not. Uh, not really. Gotcha. Yeah, I uh, switched to oil many years ago, and I really like it. Yeah, you got a great setup here. Right, that's just a regular tripod? Yeah. Okay. Yep, and it's just a Pache box made by Openbox M. And it works great. Very nice. Well, beautiful time. Yeah, it's very nice out here. Right. Well, thank you. Sure. Sorry to disturb. No, that's, that's okay. And, and what is the what's the purpose of the camera? I'm actually recording myself. I uh, do uh, online workshops and things like that. Got it. Okay. So, no, you're you're going to be uh, on my workshop, so <laughs> <laughs> hopefully you don't mind. But no, I'm going to do I'm going to be doing a, a a membership course, and the people who sign up for my course. Um, will I'm gonna be uploading a lesson once a month. And do you only do plain air? Oh no, I do lots of studio. In fact I don't get out and plain air paint as often as I should, but I get out enough so well, we'll lead you to your uh, All right, designs well, here. It's a marvelous spot here. Yeah. Yes it is. Definitely is. Thanks for stopping up. Thank you. I had some uh, visitors there. That was interesting. A watercolorist. I had to kind of have a little fun ice with her. I used to do watercolor. And it is a tough medium. Not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. I'm slightly cooling down this tree from this one. Um, trying to show just a little bit of depth and distance there. When you get your uh, values and color masses established, you can really start to have some fun by laying in some thicker paint and making very subtle adjustments to your colors and values. Okay, I had to pause for a minute and run back to my car and put up my plein air painting umbrella over the camera. The camera that's recording right now, it was actually starting to overheat. Um, I had that problem yesterday. So I uh, have that up to block out the sun from the camera. We'll see how that does. Recording yourself painting is challenging enough in the studio, beginning to find it's really challenging outside.
and I'm going in with very thick paint and just barely touching the canvas with it. As I was mentioning to that couple a few minutes ago, I teach live online oil painting classes. I do it through Zoom. We meet um, every Saturday and I take you through a painting from start to finish and uh, tell you all the colors I'm mixing, things like that. It's not uh, quite as fast as what we're doing here, um, but uh, it's very thorough. Also, I record myself doing the painting um, from start to finish on my own, so you get the best of both worlds there. Uh, anyway, if you're interested, um, you know, there's also a Q&A session and a critique session, but if you're interested, go to the description below this video and click on the link or go to my website jasontaco.com and click on workshops. Uh, seating is limited so you can sign up to be notified when there is an, another opening. As the um, light moves down, you tend to get just a little warmer, a little more toward orange it seems with these highlighted leaves. I'm not sure if that's an effect of the light or if that's just the color of the leaves down there but I'm going to paint it. I'm here to paint what I see, not figure out why I'm seeing it. Now it, can, it can definitely help to figure out why you're seeing it. I see in this transition area where it starts to transition from light to dark, it's almost like you get a little warming of the foliage into more of an orange. So I definitely want to capture that. I'm going to transition a bit to the background. You get to the point where it, you, know, you keep working those leaves and you feel like you just can't get it right. You know, you just can't capture the color the way you're seeing it. And that might not have anything to do with those leaves or you have them the wrong color, it might have everything to do with the background. It's all about relationships.
actually want to take this area down here some it's not quite in the vicinity where I started but I like that how it dips down in there something snorting off in the woods. There must be some kind of animal back there. I hope it's not a grizzly bear because just remember I forgot my spray back in the car, the trunk. Add a little more white and push that back even more than when I have it. Even if your painting fails when you're out doing this, it is so glorious to be out here. And autumn only comes once a year. So to be out here and to see this and to spend an hour or two, a couple hours in front of this is absolutely wonderful. nice too that I'm not by a highway. It's a lot of great stuff you can see along a highway. A lot of times we're going down the interstate like man I wish I could just pull over and paint that. Okay now there's some slight highlights up there. 
areas that are catching the sun going white, viridian, nickel yellow, just a touch of yellow ochre. But I want to keep it fairly cool. I'm going to go in with a little magenta to tone it down. Okay, I just want to test it and see how that looks. Pretty good. Slightly strong, but since I'm working with the stick paint, I could just gently blend it in. I gotta swatch this color. Which reminds me I should swatch the uh, background color too. Okay, good. Now I'm going to painstakingly remix the initial color. It's going to be a big pain, I know, but it's good practice, first of all. Second of all, I want to be able to make a swatch of that color for back in the studio. I'm just going to take the time and do it. That's pretty good. Now there are some ever so slight variations up there, just of slightly darker um, trees in this. I'm going to play with it and just see if I can slightly hint those without destroying it. I need a little more blue. Or actually, maybe a little more green. There, I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, now I'm going to try to get the highlights in these close-up spruce trees. Cheating and grabbing a little bit from my other pile there. I get this color, I'm definitely going to want to swatch it. I think I gotta go a little cooler yet. So go a little more viridian. a 
got a swatch. I'm not going to go crazy with that, I just wanted to get a slight indication of those. Got to do a readjustment of the easel, sun's getting on my pallet. Okay, pallet readjusted. You can tell when I start to get more in the home run stretch because I start to get real quiet. This is the part where I'm just really trying to concentrate hard on what I'm doing. Partly to make sure I don't mess it up.
so many little shapes of color down there. You got to be careful how much you grab onto. And you don't need it all. So you can't see this, but I'm constantly trying to step back and take a look at this from a distance with the seam. That really helps me to judge how correct things are and what adjustments I need to make. Basically, if I can look at the scene and, and the impression of it is the same, when I glance at my painting as when I glance at the scene, I know that I'm doing good. If the impression is different, if, um, you know, when I glance at it, something is just off, then I know that I probably need to fix something. I'm going to play with the trunks here a little bit. I don't want to go full strength dark because they are not full strength dark. You know, as I look up in the here, I don't know if I didn't see those before and notice them, but there's some distant aspens that just really have a neat kind of subtle highlight about them. Sorry, I had some bug land on me. Yesterday I was out painting some big loud buzzing thing with big long legs. Couldn't see all of it, but it was freaky looking what I could see it came and landed right on me. Okay, I don't know if I like that compositionally, but I'm gonna leave it in because this is more about note taking. And I wanna have that note in there of those colors in case back in the studio I decide to do something with it. Also, thought I'd point out that the uh, cadmium yellow light I'm using is actually a quick drying paint. Uh, yellow can take an eternity to dry, and because I'm traveling, I don't want to wait an eternity for these paintings to dry. I only have so much space for storing wet paintings, so I need them to dry a bit faster. And yellow 
because it normally is such a slow drying color when I'm doing these plein air trips I use a quick drying yellow and I also have a moderately quick drying white too Kind of at the stage of the painting where I have to remind myself I cannot exactly copy nature. I could stand out here for years and never get it exactly how it looks. And I don't need to. Um, I'm out here comparing this to the actual scene, but nobody else is gonna do that when they look at this painting, or even when I look at it later in the studio. And even the photograph is not going to um, be able to show it to me exactly how it was. However, it's Good to not be in a rush to get it done and it's so glorious out here yeah it's like who wants to leave This part too, I'm really making sure that I squint at the scene when I look at it. So that I'm painting, you know, I'm not trying to paint every single individual leaf. Okay, I think I'm gonna call that a painting.